This is the 217 Recovery Podcast with Corey Winfield. Put them numbers to your numbers and make them numbers go up. No. I mean, no. It wouldn't work. And co-host Marnie Winfield. That's why they say you're transferring $1,000 USD. Oh. U.S. dollars. Oh, yeah, that is true. It is the 12th of November, 2022. My name is Corey Winfield. My name is Marnie Winfield. And this is the 217 Recovery Podcast. We talk numbers. I guess. You had an intro and I was right. Yeah, you're right quite a bit. Huh. Quite a bit. Welcome in, though. We're going to talk a little bit about recovery today. A trip that we have planned for Detroit. It's exciting. So exciting. The Lions, mad props to them. They gave us tickets and we're going to take people in early recovery to show them that you can have a good time being sober. And at a Lions game. Tyrone, I I hope you are okay. (laughs) Tyrone is a huge Lions fan. Mm Mm-hmm. And we're taking him, and I just hope he's okay. You know, they're playing the Jacksonville Jaguars, so there's there's a chance. They're at, they're at home. Mm-hmm. Golf seems to be better at home, but it'll be fun. I think no matter what, it's going to be fun. And we're going to go to the night before, and my friend Dan <laughs> is going to do his video, like the recovery spotlight, and then Deb, little Deb, Deborah Garrett, I'm going to have her do a spotlight video, too. So, How fun. Yeah, a little work trip, but fun and game. And I have a running back in that game for Jacksonville. Oh, wow. So that's going to be like ETN. double fun. Yeah, I had to get rid of golf on my fantasy team because mm-hmm. I'm in 11th place out of 12 teams. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to win tomorrow, though. I hope I'm going to win tomorrow. I'm worried about my guy. Yeah, when your number one pick goes out, it sucks. It really sucks. I mean, I still have a solid team, but it's like, he's my go-to. Yeah, Josh Allen. So yeah. we're talking about your number one pick. And, of course, you had the number two overall pick, but that, yeah. that was Josh Allen. You know, yeah. Mine was Jamar Chase, and he's out. He's been out. I don't know. Do you even have anybody from your original roster? Uh, yeah, Hopkins. <laughs> one, one dude. Hopkins, who I waited for it. <laughs> Come off suspension. It, it's been good. It's been good. But I had to get rid of Russell. See, I put all my eggs in one basket with Russell Wilson. Uh, somehow I ended up trading. I got Dak Prescott. Much better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. It's just, just got to one, one week at a time. Just remember, it's all about fun, though. It is. But it's more fun if I win. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm creating a lot. A lot of fun for other people in the league, apparently. Yeah. So keeping it keeping it <laughs> yeah. new and fresh. Yeah, Justin had a lot of fun last week beating me. So Yeah. That's how it goes. But yeah, so we're going to Detroit and that'll be that'll be a really good time. And we kinda of were talking about it the other day. Uh Justin and I were about excuses and stuff like that and how like we're gonna bring people to the, the game, you know, and it's a sober trip. And we expect them not to drink, but at the same time, you know, I'm not their babysitter. You know, and you got to hold yourself accountable. Like you and I both know a person that's like, oh, well, I, I I, just need to be held accountable more often. I need to do this. I need to do that. And and you kind of said, well, when you got out in the real world, you know, like there's not anybody drug testing me today. There's nobody drug testing you today. Right. You know, you got to come to that point where you're going to hold yourself accountable. Like, hey, wait a minute. Like I'm off paper. Mm-hmm. No one is going to drug test me today. But I'm doing this because I want to do it. Yeah. You know. I think that's one theme that I sometimes I think that some of my clients don't think about. And of course, yes, I want them to stay clean and sober while they're in recovery housing. I would, I would assume that they would hope that they would. Um, But like my overall goal here for these people is to have a clean and sober life, right? This is just a fraction of time. This is just from them to practice being clean and sober in recovery homes Mm -hmm. it's when you get out the real test starts you know so this is it's it's, this is a big a big picture deal and you know that's what i really want for them yeah when i was in sober living i never thought about oh no jason's gonna drug test me today like drug test me today tomorrow i don't i don't really care you know it didn't really matter to me Mm -hmm. 
So to, 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 to say like, oh, well, I need to be drug tested all the time in order to stay sober. You know, that's that's probably a bad sign. Yeah. You know, and I don't know what someone's going to have to do to, to change that around in their head. I have no idea. I'm just a guy who talks on podcast about fantasy football and stuff. Time yeah. travel. <laughs> Jesus and how Jesus is a big fan of mine. Pray. Maybe God will give you some answers. That's my advice for everybody struggling. Tonight on the intimacy. Game. Already, all right. Mm. It's right off the bat. It's Saturday night, and that means one thing. They're both gonna answer questions honestly. It's time for the intimacy gang. Corey and Martin. Mm. Draw a question from the box and we're gonna answer it honestly Here on the Intimacy Game mm. It's time for the Intimacy Game mm. I've already drawn this one You took it from the big, this part I took it from the wrong I took it from the box but the wrong part of the box Cause I took it from the one that we already drew already <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness ah all right i have a good one the intimacy game welcome to the intimacy game on saturday night you want me to go first you want to go first um who went first last time i did okay now i'll go first okay i think red means stop like, i have a red one too really uh mm, okay <laughs> wait what <laughs> wait a minute <laughs> Hmm. No. Okay. <laughs> Describe something that turns you on, which you haven't shared with me. Well, I just shared with you in the bathroom a minute ago. Your outfit. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm in pajamas. Yep. Um, something that turns me on that I haven't shared with you. Hmm. I don't know, honey. I, 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 see, for men, it's, <laughs> <laughs> when you turn us on, it's kind of uh, there's a there's a little sign that kind of. It doesn't mean it doesn't need to be that extreme. Um, that's. Um, let me ask you that same question. Mine's my response is is actually pretty easy. Because lots of times I think that you're sexy when you don't think you're sexy. And I think that turns me on. Ignorant sexy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I, I just still, I have, I don't know. I don't have an answer. I think maybe when it does come to me, I will let you know. Okay. I was like, that's what it is. That's an honest answer. Okay. So my question from the one I drew the second time. How do you describe me to other people? Oh my gosh. I'm trying to think how I've like just off the cuff described you before. So I always say like, he's a big dude, bald head, beautiful eyes, amazing smile, sexy face, sexy voice. Mm. Depends on who I'm describing you to. <clears throat> Your preacher is going to be like, okay, I just wanted to know which guy I talked to here. <laughs> I to say white Caucasian, <laughs> Caucasian, <laughs> middle-aged, male. Fat, bald, dimples. Oh, dimples. Over there. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Actually, when I describe you to people, I say smart, sexy. Oh. Go get her. I talk about how you're dedicated to your job and your recovery and that you're a great wife. Oh, see, that's like totally not fair. I thought you meant like if somebody you were like you were going to come into a restaurant after I was already sat. See, that, that's <laughs> you'd difference. be like, just look for the man that's intelligent. Want to play the intimacy game? <laughs> mm -hmm. No, I Sorry, think I, I think. Win. OK, yeah, you definitely win that. But that's not, I didn't think we were going that route. Hmm. 
But de- <laughs> yeah, no, I would. <laughs> you know, I, I you think you have tons of good qualities. Yeah, he's the big fat guy, no, big fat bald guy over no. there. Is what you said? No, <laughs> you're funny. <laughs> That's and how you describe me. And you're quick witted. The big and... fat bald guy over there is farting all the no, time. No, and you're smart and you're driven and you're caring. Oh, they're just swearing a lot. And I'm like, oh, there's my beautiful wife over there. She's so smart and amazing and just dedicated to recovery. Just such an amazing wife. She's like, yeah, well, they're the f- they have fat bald guy <laughs> over there. Yeah, they want to drop an F-bomb. They'd be like, that doesn't help me. That Who guy. am I looking for? <laughs> well, that was fun. That was fun. The intimacy game. So when I saw my dad, he came up to see us. It was a quick trip. But it's always good to see him. Yeah. How is your dad doing? He's doing well. He's doing really well. Um, it was funny. We were checking it like kind of the first initial like check in with like, you know, how are things? He's like, or I know I asked about his his significant other and, you know, he made a joke about like, you know, you know, we're getting older. And um, and he said, just like me. And I kind of was thinking about it. And my dad's been sober now for 14 years. And if he would have kept on like he was, I can't say he would be with us today. And I think he knows that. And I actually, that's the first time I actually brought that up in a long time. You know, because it, it wears on your body, you know. And he was a full-blown, you know, alcoholic for the majority of my life. And so for him to have found recovery... You know, and he's really, he's really proud of what we're doing, you know, and he, he tells me all the time. So it's little trips like this that are important. I think it's important, especially when, you know, they're getting older and it's sometimes you don't know when's the last time you're going to see them. So it's good to, it's good to make time when you can. But Yeah. When you were mentioning that to him. You know, about you probably wouldn't be here if you were still yeah. drinking. You know, I kind of saw it in his face like he, I don't know if he even ever thought about it, you know, and yeah, he just kind of took for, took a minute and did think about it. I was like, well, yeah, don't I think about that because I didn't, I'm here. So, right. Yeah. It's nice to reconnect with family. And like you said, when you can make time and, and sometimes you actually have to stop and make time. Yeah. You know, I wish I was better at that. Um, I don't know. I, I that's I can write it down. Mm-hmm. You know, need to get better at that. But you know, holidays coming up, Thanksgiving's coming up, Christmas is coming up. You know, it's hard for a lot of families to squeeze all that in, especially if you have like my family and your family. You know, we have the moms and the dad side. You know, yeah. both of our parents are divorced, so you got to try to squeeze in the mom. Then you got to squeeze in the dad. And then I have to squeeze in your mom and then I have to squeeze in your dad. So we got you know, four, it, four yeah. holidays yeah, to go you, with you each time. Which is great, but it's, it's taxing. Yeah. It's a wonder. It's a wonderful blessing. It really is. It's a wonderful problem to have, to have to make it to a bunch of family functions. That's for sure. But my mom was like trying to set up some stuff with me the other day. And she's like, well, cause my sister, you know, and it's like, okay, well, when they're the kids going to be there and uh, this and that, and what trying to, schedule everything you know it's just yeah whew, it's confusing sometimes but you know as long as we can see the people we need to see while we're there you mm-hmm. know like it doesn't need to be the whole shebang right you know, like it used to be when we were kids or whatever but you know to at least make the most of the time that we do have yeah. while we're there yeah you know that that's what it's about and you know my mom i, I think in her situation she wants to have everybody under the same roof and she just likes to kind of look out and go hmm, you know i did this yeah but my older brother jerry's not going to be there um and it, it's just, it's it's not going to be you know that kind of kind of thing but if we can still come together you know and, and make it something special for for her and, and i'm sure other families are like that too where you know, the mom tries to get everybody together on the run, the, under one roof. I mean, your mom doesn't really. Well, your mom does, but doesn't. She tries, but she's also like just grateful if we can make it at some point. 
And the thing is, too, is like my, my all my family, like my siblings are all over. And so there is that piece of trying to coordinate when they're going to be around because they're not like two hours away. They're across the country. So, well, Shana's back in America, so that's good. That makes her closer. <laughs> but, yeah. But still, it's difficult. It is. It's it's hard. You know, it, And you do the best you can. And it's probably pretty stressful for them as well to try to be the ones that kind of tie it all in because – I mean, we're in Traverse City. We're like three hours away from where my mom lives. So, like, to just pick up the phone and be like, all right, mom, what time do we need to be there? Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. That's all we do, you know. Mm -hmm. But for her, she's got to, like, get with my sister, get with my little brother. And then my little brother, his wife, they got to go do that whole thing, too, you know. And and it's just like, ah, yeah. when can we all meet up? Yeah. But don't let it stress you out too much if you're the person that's, like, planning all of that, you know, like. Just take a deep breath and like, look, if, if they make it here, let's enjoy the time we have with them. You know, like I can see the nephews and nieces some other time. Maybe I stop by their house. You know, it doesn't all have to be coordinated under like the one. Everybody's together at the same time house. Mm-hmm. And we'll see people when we can. Yeah. You know, that's the best that we can do. Yeah. But I'm excited, though. How is going to be fun this year? I know. We had our first snow today. Sort of. It was it, supposed there to be was a, snow on the car. Uh, it was supposed to be a winter weather advisory, like, like, like breaking news. Yeah. They're just trying to prepare you. And then we went shopping. We came out of the store and I was like, yeah, it's here. And we got in the car and then to the stoplight and it was done. <laughs> I was like, well, where's that? Where, what happened? <laughs> that was it. Bring that back, please. Yeah. My sister texted me. She's like, is it snowing there? Uh, no. Maybe it did down there. Oh. Southwest Michigan, like where I'm from, like lake effect snow. Mm-hmm. Like, well, we're going to get one inch to 10 feet of snow today. Good luck. Mm-hmm. Like, they really have no idea. They're just like, eh, good luck. Mm-hmm. So maybe they're getting dumped on, but no, not really here in Traverse City. Oh, there'll be plenty of time for snow. Yeah. Not a huge fan. Yeah, I I like it for a minute, and then I have to drive in it, and I'm like, well, yeah, it's not all as cracked up to be, but yeah. Well, that's all I have for tonight. I just wanted to play an intimacy game, and did I say it right that time? <laughs> yeah, you can say it however you want. I don't know, but intimacy. I was, I, I was asking if I said. I know it right. you do this stress on it. It's cute. Oh, it's fine. Okay. All right. Well, I just wanted to do the podcast because, yeah, and I, I'm glad I had spent a minute since I have. I've been. I'm still fighting this cold or whatever it is. So I probably sound kind of weird, but I'm just hoping that I'm getting my seasonal, like, you know, sickness out of the way. So then I'll be all good for the rest of the season. Hopefully. And I, because I, earlier, like 20 minutes ago, I was like, I don't want to do a podcast. I know. This is because I'm not really feeling that hot. I really want to go into detail about my colonoscopy because people are just dying to hear about it Mm -hmm. but we're not gonna do that tonight no (laughs) everyone leave everyone on the edge of their seats about it (laughs) well let's just say everything's look appears to be all good yeah and i woke up in the middle the results were good (laughs) oh geez it hurt really bad but we'll talk about all that they need more than that (sighs) oh it was painful but it was kind of cool because I got to see the the screen. I was like, oh. <laughs> so weird. I know. But it was hurting. I was like, ow. <laughs> like, take it easy back there. <laughs> anyway, yeah, we'll, we'll go into detail <laughs> anyway. on a special episode of my choosing in the future. Maybe Valentine's Day. I don't know. It'll be in the future when I'm ready. Okay. When I'm ready. But thanks for listening. Check out other podcasts that we have on our app or 217recovery.com. Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening to the 217 Recovery Podcast. When a bunch of free shit from 217 Recovery. Go to the app or the website, 217recovery.com.